When you are a company that is partaking in shady business practices, you do not deserve to get off the hook easily. Australia is not messing around when it comes to companies and their bad practices. So this was a little a while ago, and you might not know, but back in March of 2016, Valve was found guilty from the years 2011 to 2014 for violations of the country's consumer laws. Valve had made misleading statements in relation to the consumer's guarantees and entitlements as defined by the nation, nation's consumer laws, and the ACCC, or the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission, <laughs> had brought it to the Australian Federal Court, and Valve lost that fight. They were ordered to pay $3 million AUD, or 2.15 million US dollars, to the Australian Commonwealth over the breaches of the country's consumer laws. They, of course, had to change their policies, and they did not just change their policies for that region specifically, but they changed them all around, so that a similar situation would never happen again. And guess who tried to do nearly the same thing by changing their policies and now they are in trouble too? Sony. Back in April of this year, the refund policy for the PlayStation Store changed a lot. They could only request a refund within 14 days of purchase if you had not downloaded the game, and the refunds would go straight to your PlayStation Store wallet. So they forced you to credit your account so that you still had to spend your money on the games that they had offered. You had no choice and could not refund the money back uh, to the method that you purchased from like your credit card or your PayPal account. After this had changed, the ACCC, or the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission, uh, decided that it was time to sue Sony's European division like they had done with Valve in the past. Going into this, I'm sure that they saw a lot of similarities and are pretty confident that they would either win or that Sony would eventually just change their policies and go on their way. Um, this is very, very similar to the Valve situation. There are a ton of similarities in these cases. Part of the ACCC statement said that Sony Europe also allegedly told consumers that it did not have to provide refunds unless the game developer told the consumer the game was in a pair of irreparably faulty or otherwise authorized a refund. It also told consumers that it could provide refunds using virtual PlayStation currency instead of money. And this is false and misleading. That is not true at all. The Australian consumer laws state that customers are legally entitled to a refund, repair, or replacement if a product is either misleadingly advertised were sold under false pretenses, not of acceptable quality or unfit for purpose. If a product matches any of those criteria, it is up to the developers and publishers or the supplier, which in this case is Sony, to provide a remedy for the situation. The ACCC's chair, Rod Sim, said in a statement that consumers who buy digital products online have exactly the same rights as they would at a physical store. Sony Europe's alleged conduct may have caused Australian consumers to not seek a refund, replacement, or repair for a faulty game when the Australian consumer law gave them a right to do so. Now, when you are a bad company, you deserve to get called out on bad practices like this. Companies like Sony think that they can get away with whatever the hell they want, and Steam was the same way. Steam did change their policies and they did make them a ton better, but I am glad that finally Sony is getting hit hard for their awful practices. The changes that they had made to their return and refund policy a little bit back a while ago were very unfriendly to consumers, and most people would just accept it and move on, unfortunately. But I am very glad that this is happening because maybe now more companies will decide to go in a different direction than Steam and Sony did. I obviously do not live in Australia, but their enforcement of consumer protections is amazing compared to many other places. They really fight back against the companies that are breaching consumer laws like this, and they really care about their consumer more than they do the corporation. And that is really good in an age where usually the corporations can get away with anything by being told they did something bad and just not to do it again. Sony has talked for so long about the future going digital, and if the future is going to be digital, policies that protect consumers have to be in place, or else no one is going to purchase digitally. 
a lot of people already hate purchasing something that they do not physically own, something that they cannot physically hold, that someone cannot take away from them. So this just adds to the distrust that people have with these companies. Overall, I am curious to see how this is going to play out, but the similarities are there. The, the, the similarities in both of these cases is huge. So I, I do think that Sony will lose this, but only time will tell. I'm curious to see how this will unfold, but please let me know your thoughts and discuss in the comments down below with everyone your thoughts on the matter. Do you think that Australia's consumer laws and consumer protections are really good? Do you think that Sony will just kind of back out and change their policies before this goes any further? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a like, and of course, if you did not, make sure to give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either which way. Make sure to check out yesterday's video i talked a little bit about a games journalist being very outraged with modern warfare and calling for censorship of it but i will talk to you guys again in the next video very soon